Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. Well, after the bloodbath in the markets yesterday following the um, Swiss National Bank's decision to remove the Euro Swiss peg, um, we actually saw a 30% swing in that FX pair yesterday and that caused untold volatility across many other markets. Um, specifically, we've seen uh, a huge uh, jump in gold as well, it jumped about 3%. Uh, huge volatility, markets up one minute, down the next. Um, but many European uh, euro focused equity markets getting a little bit of a shot in the arm because the euro dramatically depreciated on the back of that news as well, hitting an 11 year low against the US dollar. Um, and the US dollar has actually retreated right across the board as well, so it gives you a bit of an idea about how, uh, how bad the euro got hit yesterday. So the US 30 trading below uh, multiple levels of support now, 17,361. You're probably looking down here now. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my drawing tool on there. The US market not doing so great versus some of the other markets. So it's certainly underperforming. Um, the Germany 30, for example, uh, was over 10,000 yesterday. Um, but the US 30 is coming off a little bit more. Obviously, part of this uh, news from um, the Swiss National Bank is now really alluding to the fact that January 22nd, they very, very widely expect um, that Mario Draghi is going to come out with, uh, with QE on that day and they just couldn't hold the cap any further. So... This shows you the volatility uh, on the UK market, so quite a bit different to what we've seen on the US 30 that's just kind of grinding lower. We actually managed to finish the day positive. positive. Um, we're down a little bit today, but uh, 64.15 could be a potential support. Uh, on the intraday charts, things are not looking at that, that great, so I think we might we might struggle for the U UK 100 to break up a little bit higher today. And we do have a whole host of economic data, uh, due at Eurozone data, CPI data, at 10 p.m. today, followed by a University of Michigan consumer sentiment stuff from the U.S. and obviously CPI from the U.S. as well. So there could be a lot of FX-related moves. Uh, Japan 225 uh, lost all of its gains yesterday on the back of the um, volatility from the Swiss National Bank. We've got a slight hammer formation there in the candles. Dollar yen briefly hit one. Well, it didn't yeah? Well, it actually, hit one fifteen yesterday. So um, that uh, safe haven yen resurgence in the back of the volatility is not helping Japan two two five. Uh, we're pretty much looking at sixteen three ninety two as the next potential support level as ever. So looking at that dollar yen position, uh, you can see the uh, it's not quite a full bearish engulfing pattern, but close enough. We've had a slight bounce this morning, but fourteen seventy two, which was a support from quite quite some time ago. Um, will be the next level. This does not look good from a technical uh, perspective. We're crossing the zero line here. We're, all, we're not quite yet oversold on the RSI, slow stochastic there, so um, there could be further still to go, depending on how this uh, data out of the US comes later on today. So West Texas crude shot all the way up to above $50 yesterday, uh, only to then completely reverse course. As you can see here, this candle, that is also an ugly technical signal, not a very nice candle to, to, to post. It also closed down towards the end of its, uh, its trading range for the day. Um, we're flatlining so far just now at 46.50 on West Texas crude. Um, I, as ever, you know, $35 is still that longer term potential support and this is a, a bad handle to have. So pressure remains on West Texas crude with job losses being announced in the UK uh, from BP. Um, up in Scotland, about 300 jobs, 200 full-time employees and 100 contractors. Uh, that's probably just the tip of the iceberg if things continue the way that they're going. So, gold. So, last time the Swiss National Bank uh, had uh, done some interesting things with their currency, uh, gold had a massive shot in the arm. Um, the worry for, from uh, if you're a Swiss, uh, Swiss um, kind of investor is your currency just, a, just appreciated 30% in about five, five seconds. Uh, to actually finish 15% stronger by the end of the day, so obviously it, it rebounded. Uh, gold is seen as a perfect hedge against inflation. Um, so if, undoubtedly there's been huge amounts of gold buying going on in, uh, in Switzerland. Uh, and obviously the safe haven appeal, the dollar weakness and everything else um, has caused that massive spike up. So we've broken above 12.54. Uh, that's a broken resistance now expected to act as a potential support level so it could be a springboard for the future uh, so even if you go back to historical support and resistance levels here and uh, arguably you could take the tip of this candle you could still be looking at a 1273 level so that was a broken support and now expected to act as potential resistance but this is a very interesting move anyway on gold it's the most life i've seen in it for some time so we finish up with your dollar you can see there we managed to close bang on one spot 1642. You probably think about where the next level is. 
I guess some people are thinking about can we ever think about parity for euro dollar uh, this year? Uh, we know we're only 16 cents away from it, so it's not an absolute impossibility. Uh, you've got to go back quite some time. As a matter of fact, let me just uh, max this out right here. So as you can see here, this was um, 2005 lows that we broke yesterday. Uh, in fact, I might even need to go into my monthly chart to put that into perspective. Our next potential level uh, could be, well, depending on where you take it, it's probably got to be at 107 and then another level there, 102 maybe, and then things get a little bit more juicy the closer you get down here. And that is pretty much just below the level 19635 if things obviously continue in that fashion. This is a monthly chart, I should point out, so if I jump quickly back onto the onto the daily charts there, it gives you a bit of a flavor of, uh, of what to expect. So one spot 1642, will it act as a potential resistance, stopping your dollar from recovering? Well, we do have a whole host of European data CPI due today. Uh, and obviously 22nd of January that we've talked about a lot is the next um, potential announcement for QE from the ECB. So finishing up very quickly for GBP USD, bouncing around one spot 5185, uh, volatile as, as as ever. Crossover in the MACD should be bullish. Uh, maybe one uh, one spot 51.84 could be a springboard to target one spot 54.24. Um, but it depends what happens with today's uh, U.S. data because they've had a couple of misses in the last couple of sessions. Keep your eye on the chart form as ever. Make insights part of your layout going forward. And if we fast forward onto Monday, because today we do have quite a lot of stuff. Not a lot happening Monday. Tuesday, uh, ZEW business report and PPI from Germany, and that should be enough to keep. Uh, euro dollar on its toes until next week in which case join me then and we'll catch you again on monday